Good day, everybody. This is Chris back again with the Ancient Scholar, and today what I want to do is uh, talk real quickly about uh, how we discuss standard uh, dosing and standard um, exposure, exposure to concentrations and doses of, uh, of uh, chemical agents. So the, uh, the, the way that um, we measure uh, doses varies a little bit. When, when we're dealing with uh, exposure to solids, to solids or liquids, it's relatively straightforward uh, to talk about how much you've been exposed to. For example, if I have a, um, a liquid here, all right, and that liquid contains, you know, it's just a little small amount, we'll say, that liquid contains a, a certain mass if you will, actually that, that's exactly what it is, a certain mass of the particular agent of the particular agent that uh, we are looking at. And so when it comes to exposure to solids or liquids, we will just typically talk about it in mass units, such as uh, the, I um, ingested uh, so many milligrams, uh, so many micrograms or um, I was exposed to so many grams um, nanograms or what what have you but it is a mass unit now when it comes however when we talk about exposure to um, vapors vapors or gas or agents in their their gaseous form which is a vapor is a, a um, is somewhat analogous to a gas as we talked about in the last um, uh, the last uh, video then there ha there is another way to uh, look at this and that is we have to consider a concentration time type of unit a concentration time type of unit. Uh, because if you think about it, um, if I'm in a vapor or a, or, or, or a gaseous environment, um, you can imagine that that here I am. I'm not going to draw a very good uh, body because I'm just not a great artist. But if you can imagine, I am in a certain... Imagine that I'm in maybe a cube or something like that. Um, Okay, there's a certain three-dimensionality uh, to, to the environment that I'm in. There we go. That's not uh, totally terrible. It's reasonably terrible, not totally terrible. There we go. So I'm in a certain three-dimensional environment, and then I have perhaps gas molecules, or I have aerosolized molecules of the agent, the toxicant, the, the agent in there. And so, depending on the concentration of the agent in this particular volume of, of gas that I'm in, um, I'm going to have so many, so many, uh, so much mass, so much mass, um, and I'm going to have a certain type of mass exposure. You know, I'm going to inhale it. It's going to uh, get into my in or on uh, my skin and mucous membranes. So when we talk about uh, measuring. Uh, the the dose in that case, uh, what we typically do is um, we typically, like I said, measure in concentration time, and uh, it may look something like this. For example, um, I'll measure uh, my uh, the dose of the concentration in milligrams minute per cubic meter. That tends to be very common way of looking at. Okay, so I'm getting so many milligrams in a minute um, per okay per cubic meter of of atmosphere or air that I'm in. Um, it could just as easily be micrograms minute per cubic meter as well. Um, and again, you know, a cubic meter that's just length length cubed. You know, so. I mean that that kind of makes sense if you think about it. You have your your uh, your y, your x, your z, and that gives a three dimensionality. Um, that 
is a better representation of the kind of environment that I'm in um, when it comes to vapor gas exposure. Okay, so now that everybody's on the same page there, let me go ahead and just clear this real quick and just compare in contrast um, some standard definitions when it comes to exposure or it comes to um, dose. So again, when talking about solids, we talk about solids and liquids. Okay, there are three concepts that come into to play here. There's something known as the E D 50. There's something known as the L D 50. And there's something known as the I D 50 in some cases. Okay, the E D 50 is the effective dose 50%. Okay, it's the effective dose, all right, 50%. So what does that mean? That means that in 50% of a population, whatever the, you would expect uh, that certain dose to produce some response. And you have to define the response, all right? Um, the actual response has to be defined. Are we talking about, uh, perhaps we're talking about a nerve agent and we're talking about the um, presence of bradycardia, heart rate uh, less than 60, or perhaps we're talking about a uh, nerve agent and we're talking about um, meiosis or, or constriction of the pupils. But we have to, uh, what, is, what is the clinical response that we're actually looking at? And on all of these, concepts, we also have to identify the route, the route of exposure. If I, um, if I have a topical, you know, if I have a, a topical exposure of 10 milligrams of a certain agent, um, I may not have the same clinical effects as if that 10 milligrams were uh, perhaps um, aerosolized and I inhaled them or perhaps um, they were absorbed through a mucous membrane versus um, uh, my skin, my integumentary, uh, my, my integumentary system on my arm or my leg or my heel. Um, so you have to identify the route. So the specific response, whatever that response is in the route in this case. Now, LD50 is we're not looking at some sort of, uh, some sort of effect um, but rather we're looking at uh, the at mortality, we're looking at death. So this is the lethal dose. This is the lethal dose, 50%. And this is the dose that will cause lethality in 50% of the population. Um, so you don't worry, have to worry about response because the response is um, already identified in lethality. But you still have to define the route. Okay, what route are we talking about? And that is that, and and so you can see very quickly that medications, uh, uh, chemical uh, agents, chemical warfare agents, in particular, are going to have very different LD50s. That you're not going to have just one LD50 for an agent. You're going to have um, an LD50 for uh, this concentration, this uh, or this this agent at this route. So many milligrams. Um, absorbed through the skin or so many milligrams ingested. Um, so uh, it becomes a bit more complicated than you might initially think. And then the ID50 is, is kind of a special case. And, and the ID50 is the incapacitating dose. So let me just go ahead and put that there. The incapacitating dose all right, 50%. And this has to deal with your more of your um, irritating or incapacitating agents, where, such as, um, let's say, um, CS uh, tear gas or uh, perhaps pepper spray or something like that, um, your, your various riot control agents, where you're not necessarily looking to, to kill, um, but you're looking to incapacitate or make um, whoever this agent is being used against um, to uh, make them incapable of, of doing whatever it is that, you know, that they are doing. Um, uh, so there you have it. Um, 
again, it's still, uh, you're going to need to identify the route in this case as well. Okay, so that's exposure to solids and liquids, but just like we talked about just a couple minutes ago, um, the actual dose of uh, solids and liquids and vapors and vapors and gases um, and gas, obviously we're going to have to have slightly different concepts here. So in, in this case, um, they're, they're analogous, they're just slightly different because they have to take a time time component into consideration. So in this case, instead of an effective dose, what we'll have is we'll have an effective concentration 50, okay? So it's the effective concentration as opposed to the dose. So it is a concen concentration, um, exposure to a certain concentration um, that causes a, a certain effect in 50% of your population. In this case, um, you still want to, if you can, identify the route, although oftentimes we may actually just kind of assume, you know, since we're talking about a gas, that, that maybe we are assuming inhalation, but that's not necessarily always the case. Um, but in a lot of cases, it's particularly when it comes to uh, ner nerve agents and blood agents and things like that with their systemic effects, um, the, the, the assumption is often that we're, we're talking about inhalation, but still, um, if you're able to, if you're definitively able to identify the route, it's probably best to do that. Um, okay, likewise, you have instead of uh, LD50, you just have the LC50, which again is a concentration um, that causes death in 50% of the population. And then Again, you have the incapacitating concentration, 50%, which is still a concentration, but in this case, it is an incapacitating concentration Incapacitating concentration. Okay, so um, I think I'll cut it off here. I think that's all, all we just make sure that we're good on, on what the terminology means and what the difference between ED, LD, ID50, um, and EC, LC, and IC 50% um, really are, and it, it really just has to do with a, a concentration versus a dose, uh, or versus just a pure mass, you're talking about a concentration. Alrighty guys, uh, as always, thanks for hanging in there.